These are the conditions that I like to dive on. So beginning of the summer, I like to go on a spring low tide. Spring tides are where the tidal range is biggest. So it's the highest high tides and the lowest low tides. And you get that twice a month on the new and, and on the full moon. If you dive on the spring low tide, that's gonna be the least amount of water you're gonna to have to swim down to get to the crabs which live at the bottom. Obviously, if you, if, you if you dive on the high tide, that gap is gonna be so much bigger and you're gonna to have to dive down for meters. So dive on the, spr on the spring low tide. Um, you don't want too much swell and you want there to be good visibility so you can actually see what's going on. Right now, I've got exactly that. It's May, spring low tide, uh, good visibility and just a couple of feet of swell. I know where the crabs are. I dived here yesterday, so I know, I know there's crabs around. And um, I'm gonna show you what kit I use to, to dive with. Flippers and some, some wetsuit boots. Snorkel and um, goggles or mask. A wetsuit, I like a hood on mine. And this is a broom handle with a paint roller um, duct tape to it to use as my crab hook. And this helps me get crabs out of tight holes. Um, yeah, gives me a bit of extra reach. I find this really, really handy. And that's just a towel. But um, dying for spider crab can feel pretty daunting at first. I found it, the first um, crab I picked up felt really terrifying. Um, and I was kind of beating around the bush for a good hour like trying to find find the courage to just pick up the crab because you think they're going to be way more um like ferocious than they actually are they're pretty chilled and they're way easier to pick up than i realized at first um but i'm going to get into all of how i do it in this next bit of the video when you're diving for crabs you've got to make sure that you're only getting ones that are bigger than 13 centimeters long on my stick on my crabbing stick I've got a notch, I don't know if you can see that there, but I've put in a little notch of for 13 centimeters. In Cornwall, where I am, um, the spider crabs you take have to be bigger than 13 centimeters from, oh, one sec, let me, get, let me get one of my old skulls. The measurement you wanna be taking is from here to here. So I, get, I can line up with my stick and I can really clearly see whether that it's bigger than 13 centimeters. Um, I'm pretty sure, I think in some counties around the UK, the, the females have to be t um, 12 centimetres or more and the males have to be 13 centimetres or more. In Cornwall, I think they both have to be 13 centimetres for you to take them back. Um, these are both way bigger than 13. That's the male, that's the female. Female's way bigger. Um, so bear that in mind while you're diving. You don't want to be taking the baby ones, you want to be taking the big ones. So once I've jumped in the water, I just start scanning around and looking for crabs. Um, they're pretty well camouflaged. And they like to hang out in the kelp or in kind of rock pits or under ledges. Um, and often don't see any at first and then you'll see one and my eyes adjust and start seeing loads. So once you spot one, hang out on the surface for a little bit, get, get your breath and just dive down and pick it up either with your crab hook or with your hands. The less you mess around, the easier it will be. Pick up the crab near the back of the shell. That way the claws won't be able to reach round and pinch you on the hands. Once you've reached the surface, you can turn the crab upside down and its claws will stop moving around so much. This here is an example of a really young male. He's way too small to take, so leave ones that size. Telling the difference between females and males is really easy. You can kind of tell from above. The females look like they're huge, but they don't really have very big claws. So if you see a huge crab, but you can't see big claws, then it's probably a female. The males have smaller bodies relative to their claws, but you can always see their claws poking out from underneath their body, almost like elbows sometimes sticking out. And you'll definitely be able to tell the difference from above, whether it's a male or a female. The males and females have two different flaps underneath them. The males have like a long, narrow bell curve flap, and the females have a much rounder flap. And often you'll find a female with 
a swollen flap underneath and that means she's got eggs and if you pick up a female crab with eggs then you should put her back where you found her so her eggs can all turn into more crabs for for next year i just swim around for half an hour or so and just go home once i found the biggest males i can find normally one or two I'm going to kill the crabs now, so it might be uncomfortable for some people to watch this bit, so please skip if this isn't something that you want to see. It's an uncomfortable process. I think a crab was the first animal I ever killed, and um, it's no easier today than it was the first time I did it. Um, I don't want it to be something that's easy. It's something that is hard. It's an initiation um, every single time I do it. and. Of course, everyone has different opinions on whether um, eating animal products, eating animals is an appropriate thing for a human to do. I feel that it is. And I like to have this close relationship with the uh, animals I'm eating as best I can. And this is the best way I know how to be eating animal products, to be eating animals. And to go through the process of killing those animals myself is a very important part. I picture the animal as the smallest version of it as it can be. So in terms of the crab, I think of it as an egg and the journey that it's been on to get to this table right here. Um, all the interactions it's had to remember that it has lived a life and that life should be honored. When I kill something to eat, it reminds me that I'm part of a cycle. I'm not an isolated being. I'm part of a very big wheel of death and rebirth constantly. And um, it really brings me back into, the, into where I am right now. I'm a piece of a much bigger process and I'm part of this thing. And killing something to me really throws me back into that space. So people have different methods that they kill crustaceans and crabs. Um, I like to do it as quick as I can. Uh, I would normally do this on the, on the coast, on the rocks, but I've brought, brought it back to do it here for the sake of the video. Um, but I, I get a, a sharp thing like a, a knife or a, or a stick or a screwdriver or something. And um, there's a place you can stab them, which knocks them out straight away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you where that is now. So right here you can see there's this flap and at the bottom of that flap is a pit. Like I said earlier, male ones have this kind of like longer curved one. Female ones have a more like round flap there. But basically you peel that flap back and you stab it into the pit. That should kill the crab very quickly. So I'm going to do that now. See there? There's a pit right there. You can see that pit. If I just go in and wiggle around, crab dead, just like that. And that to me is the quickest way of killing a crab in a way that you don't have to boil it alive or put it in a freezer or anything like that. That's my preferred method. I'll do it again. Flap. I use a thinner blade to get under, the, under that flap. Feed it back. Find that pit. Find that pit there. And I've got it lined up on the pit and you just go, one go. There we are. Dead. Hmm. So you can see there, at the, at the, underneath that flap, there's this hole I've, where I've stabbed. And that's the pit that I go into, and I go as far as I, until I reach the, the shell on the other side. I've got two pots of boiling water. I've got my crabs. 
and I'm just going to put them in the boiling water for about 20 minutes to half an hour, the whole thing at once. Right, that one in there. And So I've got crabs in a pot each. I'm going to leave them for about 20 minutes, half an hour to boil and steam through. And I'll come back and get them in a bit. So the crabs are cooked and they've cooled down. And now we're ready to start smashing them up a little bit to get the flesh out. That's not the easiest job in the world. And I generally find it takes between half an hour and 40 minutes per crab to get all the flesh out. And you need to use some tools. I use a hammer to start breaking through some of the tough exterior on the legs. Um, a butter knife or just a normal knife. Helps with some scooping, and then I use a wooden skewer for some poking. Um, between these three tools, I generally find I can get all the stuff out I need. And now I've got two bowls. Bowl here is for the bits I don't want to eat, the shells, etc. And then a bowl here for the flesh. And we just start working around the crab. I start with the legs. See, I've broken one of these legs off already. Um, the best way to tackle the, the legs is, is to find the join. There's a join there. And instead of just snapping it off, try and twist off with the join and you can pull out all the flesh um, from, from within the crab's body at the same time. There we are, so twist and pull and it pulls out that whole, whole chunk of flesh too. And then flesh in the bowl. Um, right, I've got a couple of legs here and um, I just go through each join. So there's the, the end of the claw and you can pull them in a way that means you can keep pulling the flesh out as you go. That's going to be the quickest way. So if you break it and pull like that, it's going to pull out a little bit of flesh at the same time. I generally find virtually no flesh in that little last bit of the leg. So that can go in there. Next section. Hello. How are you? How's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. I'm doing a video about spider crabs. Nice. <laughs> they are big, yeah. So as you're left with these little segments of each leg, there'll be flesh in there that you want to eat. So that's where the hammer comes in. And break that apart. So it's like that. And then you can start pulling away the exterior and putting the flesh in the bowl. See, this is why it's a long process. So you've got to do each leg and then each cavity of the body. So that's how you do the kind of back legs. Claws, of course, are the same. I'm going to take one of these claws off. Do it in a way that, that twists. So you get, so you pull the flesh out at the same time. This is one of the biggest crabs I've ever got, by the way. This is pretty much the biggest claw I've ever seen on a crab. That is going to be full of meat. So twist that. <laughs> Look at all the meat on there. Wow. I love eating food fresh from the sea or from the land. It's my favourite thing to do. It's such a gift. So yeah, that's tough. That, that bit right there. Um, snap that and pull the flesh out. Try not to completely destroy the shell because then you get you kind of get shell in the um, in the flesh. So just smash it a bit and then start peeling it away. So a lot of it can be done with fingers, but this is where the kind of the tool like this kind of come in. You can do a bit of scoopage, make it really speeds it up. Try not to get any shell in the flesh bowl. It's always good. So I'm going to stop with the legs there for a bit now and I'm going to pull the legs off this and I'm going to show you how I do the body. You're like guaranteed to get them when you die if you know where they are and they're pretty much everywhere. So this is how I tackle the, the body. Obviously that's the main shell and you often see these washed up on the beach and you can separate that from the rest of the body by just peeling up the back like that 
and the, all of it will lift out. So you're left like this. It's on this side where you've got the lungs of the crab, all of these bits around here. Now you don't want to be eating these. I always grew up being told that these are poisonous. I don't think they are actually poisonous, but I th think you'd really struggle to eat them. People call them dead man's fingers. Um, I don't think you could even get them down your throat. So you want to get rid of them. That can go in the, the bowl of stuff we're not eating. You're making sure that's all going. Do that on both sides. Now, the body of this crab is filled with loads of tiny little chambers, each absolutely full of meat. And this is the really slow bit because you want to work through the, the body of the crab, kind of breaking it into pieces to access all these chambers. Um, and a lot of people just throw the body away and don't bother with it, but it's absolutely full of meat. Crack that down the middle, left with two halves. And you see, see in there, all of that is amazing flesh. Yeah, this is where the poking sticks all start to come in handy. So you'll see all of this flesh in there and you want to just start picking all of that out. So the more patient you are with this bit, the more flesh you're going to get. So you can see there are all the cavities. And I'm going to break this up with a knife. When I do that, you'll then be able to see how in there it's just completely filled with meat. So you want to pick all of that out and just go through chamber by chamber. And that's, that's the whole process really. And this bowl, by the time I've done both crabs, will be pretty full. You know, these two crabs are gonna probably feed four people. The speed at which I could actually go and dive for them is like an amazing return on like time and energy investment, I think. You know, spider crabs are, I think they're slightly feared because they look a bit weird, but they're, I think, one of the UK's most underutilized food sources and most of our spider crabs that get caught are actually exported to Spain um, from what I've heard and they're you know they're, they're just not something that springs to mind all the time when we think about our, our seafood we think of oysters and shrimps and brown crab maybe and of course fish as well but around the UK coastline there is so much of these crabs and at certain times of the year, there's just carpets of them. Like I've dived and I've just seen thousands at once. You can't move for them. It's pretty crazy. Um, so when the spider crab season is on, I make sure that I really, I'm really utilizing that. I think as, as hunting goes or as fishing goes, this is a really amazing entry point. Um, and it's the yeah first thing, first animal I ever caught by myself was a spider crab. So by the end of picking all of these crabs you'll have a bowl full of flesh which you can do anything you like with. I love it on toast with a bit of lemon and salt and pepper. You put it in pasta. You can just eat it as it is. And then the very last thing that I like to do is just throw all the unused bits of shells and and the lungs and the dead man's fingers and all of that back into the sea where, where they came from. Um, there we are. Who knows who will eat them? And that's it. That's how I get spider crab. Thanks for watching, guys. That's the video.